Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Henrique Samin. He is currently a swine nutritionist at Hubbard Feeds. So Henrique, would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself and what it is you do? Absolutely. Thank you, Clayton, for having me. A um, little bit about myself. I'm originally from Brazil. I uh, moved to the U.S. about six years ago for my Ph.D. in Applied Soil Nutrition at K-State. Um, and there I had the opportunity to do research in several different areas uh, with a special focus on amino acid nutrition for both nursery and growth finish base. And then since graduating in mid-2019, I have been with Hubbard Feeds as a swine nutritionist where my main responsibilities today are overseeing our swine R&D program and providing technical support to our customers. Awesome. So I was looking at the study that Hubbard did um, about the uh, beneficial effects of using uh, higher levels of soybean meal and grow finished diets rather than using synthetic amino acids. Would you mind telling us a little bit about that study? For sure. Um, some quick uh, background information. Uh, there's been a significant amount of research around soybean meal uh, in terms of performance benefits that we see and its net energy value. Um, some, some work conducted at K-State uh, a couple of years ago showed consistent improvements in feed efficiency of pigs fed higher levels of soybean meal, uh, which then based on caloric efficiency suggests that we may be underestimating the net energy of, of this ingredient. And actually some recent calorimetry work published by Dr. Stein uh, more recently, and then Lee and others a couple of years ago, actually show that the net energy of soybean meal seems to range from about 22 to 2600 kcal per kilogram, depending on which paper we're, we're talking about. Uh, and that means around 85 to 100% of corn uh, net energy, so significantly higher than book values. Um, so our goal with this study was to conduct a large scale commercial type research using grow finished pigs to evaluate the effects of soy meal on growth performance and see if we could capture those differences, especially on, on feed efficiency. So for this study, we used about 1700 pigs from 90 to 200 pounds of body weight. Uh, so our trial had a 49 day duration and we had 20 or 21 pigs per pen. Uh, for the, the treatment structure, we decided to keep it simple to really maximize the number of, of replicates that we had. Uh, so we had only two treatments that I'm gonna call low and high uh, soybean meal. And these diets were fed in three phases. Um, so the difference between our two treatments, the low and high soybean meal, uh, in terms of the inclusion rate of soybean meal was around 50% or so. Uh, so for example, in our first phase, the soybean meal level was 17% for the low treatment and 26% for the high treatment. Um, and of course, we, we obtained those, those differences in soybean meal level by changing the, the inclusion rate or the use of synthetic amino acids. Um, an important point here, about the diet formulation is that we used 90% of corn for our soybean meal net energy, which again is significantly higher than, than the NRC, which is 78%. Um, and the diets were isocaloric, uh, meaning that we added some fat to a few of the diets to make sure they all had the same uh, net energy. Um, and another thing I should mention here is that these pigs were severely health challenge during their nursery phase uh, with PERS 144, so before the trial started. Uh, however, by the time the trial actually started, when they were 90 pounds, the pigs were in very health, uh, very good health condition. Um, so moving on to the, to the results here, uh, we observed for the overall period from day zero to 49, is that the pigs fed high soybean meal diets had a numeric, uh, improvement in average daily gain, not a statistical difference, but only a numeric improvement uh, from high to low soybean meal. Differences were relatively small, around 2%, uh, but they did result in a 2.4 pound heavier pig at the end of the study. Although again, differences in, in final body weight there were only numerical and not statistically significant. Um, now what was 
highly significant was the improvement we saw on feed efficiency for the pigs fed higher levels of soybean meal. So remember, even though we formulated the diets with 90% of core net energy for soybean meal, and we made sure they were isocaloric, we still observe about a 2.5% improvement in feed efficiency. Um, and this observation, I would say, is very much in line with the research that I previously mentioned. Um, we also measure mortality and removals throughout the study. And although there were not many uh, pigs removed, the high soybean meal treatment had a, a numeric decrease in removal rate from about 1% down to about 0.4%, which again, is not a lot, uh, but it, uh, it is also going kind of in the right direction uh, if we consider some previous work suggesting potential health benefits of soybean meal. Yeah, I was going to say, when I was looking at the data, considering the PERS health challenge, when looking at the two mortality rates, they're both pretty low, which is pretty impressive. But um, so one question I had was when evaluating these two diets and equating the amino acid levels, which ones did you focus on? Did you um, actually do all the, uh, all the essential amino acids or did you like stick with the main ones like lysine, methionine, threonine, tryptophan, et cetera? Yep. So... Um, the two diets had the same lysine, threonine, and tryptophan amino acid ratios, um, but the high soybean meal diet had higher isoleucine, valine, and leucine to lysine ratios uh, because of the lower inclusion rate of synthetic amino acids, of course. Uh, but it's important to mention that both, both treatments met or exceeded the requirement estimates for all essential amino acids. Gotcha. And you said the feed efficiency was improved with the soybean meal diet. Um, did you do any analysis on that with income over feed costs? I know that can very much, well, vary between um, different parts of the United States or even Brazil, wherever you're at. But um, with the area you're in, did you do any analysis with that? Yeah, that's, that's a great point. And like I said, it really depends where you're at and what your ingredient prices are, right? It really depends on the economic scenario. So if you... If you asked me a few months ago when we were having those massive supply chain issues, you know, synthetic amino acid prices were, were extremely high, it would probably make a lot of sense economically to feed a higher soybean meal diet, uh, especially considering the potential feed efficiency uh, benefits. Now the prices are somewhat, you know, back to normal, I would say. The income of the overfeed cost between the two diets is probably much closer. So again, really depends on where you are and what your ingredient prices are at any given point. Right. Yeah. And the market's uh, pretty volatile, it seems, lately. So you never know. It might be different one month than next. Um, and you also mentioned uh, potentially underestimating energy levels of soybean meal. And that's not the first time I've heard that. You know, that's been something that's talked about a little bit, little bit before. Um, you mentioned Stein's research. So what all points you to that conclusion and, or what other work do you think needs to be done to reinforce um, the hypothesis that the current recommended energy values for soybean meal are too low? Yeah, that, that's a great point. Uh, so what we did with our data and what others have done as well is to calculate caloric efficiency, which is basically a measure of calories ingested per pound of gain. And we use that value to then estimate the net energy of soybean meal in our study. Um, and the estimate we got with this method was around 100% of core net energy, which is very, very much in agreement with previous research conducted while, while I was at K-State. So of course, using a, a growth performance trial and caloric efficiency to try to determine the net energy of an ingredient is not ideal and it does have flaws, uh, but it can be sort of an indication to assess if our net energy values are correct or not. Um, the gold standard method, of course, is calorimetry, calorimetry chambers. As I mentioned before, Dr. Stein from the University of Illinois uh, recently reported uh, that soybean meal has 2200 kcal per kilogram approximately, and that means 84% of core net energy using this method. So it's below what we see with caloric efficiency. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show and uh, sharing all this data with us. Absolutely. Thank you very much for having me, Clayton.
Yeah, and to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this episode and we are constantly on the lookout for the latest updates in swine nutrition. And if you have a swine nutrition related research trial that you would be able to share on our podcast, please send an email to nutritionblackbelt at swineit.com and we would love to talk about your research. See you later.